What is love? This is probably one of the most misunderstood terms, both by the world and by the church. We all know the song, What is love? Baby, don't hurt me no more. It's so sad that this is how the world sees love, as a source of pain, as a love that leads to breakups, broken hearts, disappointments, rejections, and so forth. This is the world uh, ruled by Satan. This is not the biblical love. In the Bible, we find three or four types of love, uh, depending on how deep you want to look. Uh, I've even seen some articles mentioning seven types of love. But we can easily find uh, agape in the Bible. We can find brotherly love and a romantic love. And no matter which kind of love we examine here, we need to understand what love is supposed to be. What the, what the Bible defines as love, no matter which type of love, there are certain characteristics of love uh, that we should not misunderstand. Love is very important. God is love. All the commandments of God are contained in love God and love your neighbor. All of it is contained in love, basically. So. It's a very important topic, and to misunderstand it is just to miss all of Christianity, to, to miss how to be a good neighbor, how to do unto others what we would want them to do to us. The Old Testament defines some behaviors towards our neighbors, to, towards other people that, that we should follow. It gives us examples, it gives us elements of love out of which we can construct a, a lifestyle of love towards other people, a lifestyle of proper biblical love. First of all, love is not lust. And for many homosexuals especially, love is understood as lust. It's all about the physical love. It's all about sexual gratification. Love is not lust. And number two, love is not just being nice. It's not just being very pleasant, being polite, being neighborly, being courteous. It's not about saying hello and waving at your neighbor. Love is about doing the right thing. Love is about doing the right thing. And when we know the basics, we can already deduce that. It says, do not lie about your neighbor. Do not desire any of their stuff. Do not take revenge on people. Of course, don't murder them. Don't steal from them and so forth. And also, more specifically, Leviticus 18.20 says, you shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife. So no cheating. I'm saying this because now everything seems to be on the table or off the table. Um, all the rules seem to be gone. The morals are very fluid. So sometimes we need to be specific. The Bible says, you shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife. But it also says not to cheat your neighbor in business. Leviticus 25, 14. If you make a sale to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor, you shall not wrong one another. So if you're selling something, even on Facebook, on Marketplace or KGG or whatever, don't cheat people. If you are a used car salesman, do not cheat, do not lie, do not ask more than the product is worth. Another one, Leviticus 19.16, you shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. No talking badly about people behind their back. No backstabbing, no, no backbiting. This one is very important and there's so much bad gossip, there's uh, a lot of slander, and yet people pretend that they are nice people because they smile and they are polite, but you don't have to offer fake smiles to other people, just do not slander them. Another one, Leviticus 19.17, you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. Now this one is difficult because it says if you have a problem with your um, brother which is a in the Old Testament that was another Hebrew another Jew if for Christians today it's another Christian brother another person who is saved another follower follower of Jesus 
And if you have a problem with them, you should confront them. You should not uh, hold a grudge against them quietly, but just come up to them and, and tell them what the problem is and talk it out, solve it somehow. It's not easy to confront people, but we should all know this is the standard. That's what Leviticus 19.17 says. And um, as difficult it is to confront people, we should learn to practice that. Another one, Leviticus 19.18, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge. See, this is right after uh, the confrontation uh, commandment, because if you, do, if you don't confront your brother and you know that there is something, you know, there is a problem between the two of you, you are very likely to develop a grudge and then you may want to take vengeance. So that's why this next commandment says, do not take vengeance, do not bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, which today, like I said, is another Christian. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then in the book of Exodus, we have some beautiful examples which are very specific. And I don't know how many people know about those, but it says, if you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. So, two people live in a village and uh, one donkey escapes, starts walking somewhere. You see that donkey and you know it belongs to your neighbor. You should bring it back to that neighbor. That's what you should do. There's no finders keepers in the Bible. If you, if you find something of your neighbor, you, you bring it back to them. It's not just a donkey, it's not just an ox. And although this may seem not applicable to today's life, it is applicable because people still have chickens, they still have, there, there are people with livestock and people have pets and their dog, your neighbor's dog might run away, uh, their cat might run away, or they just might lose a wallet near your driveway. And in that case, uh, if you see their dog wandering somewhere, you're supposed, you're supposed to tell them where you saw the dog, uh, if you find a wallet, you're supposed to bring it back. If you are able to get the dog and bring it back to them, you're supposed to bring it back to them, not pretending that you never saw the dog and not helping at all. You're supposed to get involved and get that property back to them. And there's no finders keepers in the Bible. If you find the, the wallet, give it back to the owner. Another one, Exodus 23, 5. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. It is somebody who hates you. Of course, it could be the same person because that's often the case. But either way, you could feel more justified in not helping him because, hey, the guy hates me, why should I help him? But it says, if you see him struggling with something, in this example, this is a donkey again trying to, to carry some burden, but it could be anything. The guy could be struggling uh, with something in his yard. You're supposed to come and help, not just leave him there with uh, his struggles, with his problems, but you're supposed to step in and help him. And these are the elements of love from the Old Testament, because they show us how to behave, what to do, what love is, how to treat our neighbors according to God's standard not according to politeness and pleasantries and fake smiles. No, real love is action. It's doing the right thing. All these examples, they point to doing the right thing. None of these commandments is telling us to, to be polite, to offer fake smiles and empty promises. No, they always tell us to do something specific, to help in a specific way. Let me tell you a parable. There was a man who came from a faraway city and he bought a house in a, in a faraway land. And he had a new neighbor who was very polite and pleasant and the neighbor always offered help. He said, if you need anything, stop by. But the man who bought the house, he said, no, uh, thank you very much, but uh, I don't need anything, um, but, but thanks. 
So the neighbor always waved and stopped by to chat and he was very pleasant, very nice, very polite. And then the man who bought the house went back to his old city and he left his house with an orchard because the house also had an orchard. He left them just standing there and he was gone for a year. When he came back, he saw that almost all his trees were eaten by deer. And he asked his new, very pleasant, very nice neighbor, did you see animals eating trees in my orchard? And the very pleasant, very nice neighbor politely said, oh yes, we all saw the deer eating. When I drove by, I always saw deer eating your trees. And the new owner was just floored. And he said, why didn't you do something? And the neighbor had no answer. Oh, I just, uh, you know, I was just driving by. He found it funny and he, he could have helped, and, but he never scared away the animals. He never helped to protect the trees. He never did anything specific to help. He never did the right thing. You can find many more examples in uh, the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy, uh, of God describing what we should do, how we should love our neighbors. The Old Testament gives us the elements, the examples upon which we can construct our behavior. And because of the lack of knowledge of the Old Testament, uh, people make up their own vision, their own ideas of what makes up love. And that's one of the reasons that the church is straying, church is misguided. That's why churches are like social clubs. It's all about being nice and offering you a fake hug at the door. But then the same people sometimes would even spit at you if they saw you outside the church crossing the street. So remember, what is love? Love is not a feeling. Love is not being nice. Love is doing the right thing according to God's standard. Thank you for listening and may the Lord richly, richly bless you from Zion. Take care. Bye-bye.